Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Marta Blair, for the ones who don't know me. Um, I'm originally from Colombia, and I have been in New York for 20, like 23, 23 years now. So um, it's been it's so great. I have two kids still. I'm homeschooling part time, doing my artwork and working, and it's been um, it's been really crazy the last three months for us. Um, I don't know. Like suddenly, after all the rush of the you know New York life, boom, 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 for many years in a row. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, when this stopped, is it was like really shocking and scary. So I don't know, my work has been really, uh, I guess, affected in so many ways by that. I feel like I haven't been productive at all. I've been like jumping here and there many days of really being totally unproductive, out of focus here. And there. so it's been a it's been a very interesting three months. At the same time, like really, really intimate and really deep feelings and things that I'm pretty sure they're coming out. Interesting. In uh -huh. Sections or in <coughs> here and there. So this has been my little, a little bit of my, my experiences for the last three months. My studio, I have a little studio that has been closed for the entire time. It's just opening next weekend. Um, so I'm pretty much working at home. All this time, whatever I've been doing, little, little here, little there, uh, it's just been happening here, like right here in my living room. So, yeah, so that's a little bit like the overall of my context. I'm going to share my screen and go over my website a little and show you a little bit of my, my studio and what happened there. So let me just go there. The studio that's closed right now? Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of have a little view there. Oh, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I have to do that. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. Sorry. Okay, now you can go. Hi, Diane is there. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Okay, I thought for this specific um, for this specific um, presentation, I thought it would be nice to talk a little bit about you know behind the scenes kind of thing. I guess my website, you know, you can go you can go over the website, but what happens in the back and the way I work and a little bit like the stages of the work in different moments so that's that's why i kind of uh, wanted to show you uh this this is a tab in my website that i don't usually have it uh public i just have a desk for my records so but i just put it on uh today to show you a little bit about about that behind the scenes thing and i want to start with this like um close-ups of my paintings for some reason, when I look at them like very close, um, I see there are elements that I use over and over and over again. Uh, pieces of fabric, pieces of paper, uh, little cords and strings. And um, so these are elements like really, really constant in all my paintings, transparencies and uh, things that I erase and cover and move around. And so that's an element that I think is very present in all my work. And um, so with this, I guess you get a feeling of, you know, the overall general uh, things that I use most of the time. So now I'm gonna go to the studio 
little photos. So I have a tiny, mini, mini, mini studio. It's pretty much what you see there. <laughs> Maybe a few more feet uh, here. Oh, wait, do you have the image up? I have it up. No, because we can't see it. You have to unshare your screen. You are screen sharing. Yeah, take, turn off the screen share and then click the photos that you want. Uh, no, but I'm sharing my website. Yeah, but we don't see that right now. Hold on. So it, you have to kind of stop screen share and then click what you want us to see. Are you seeing that now? No, no, no. You got to stop the screen share. That seems to be the best thing to do. Go down. Yes, yeah, stop screen share. Now do screen share again. Oh. The, and then, but you have to choose the picture that you want. Yeah, I'm right here. You cannot see it? No. Oh. We can't see your studio. No. That's funny. Can you see these now? Not yet. Okay, now we can. Okay, everybody make sure to mute your um, audio. Everyone, um, we'll have questions later. Okay, now we can see it, uh, Marta. Oh wait, did I mute you, Marta? Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I muted you, Marta. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry for, okay, there you go. You're on now. Okay. So I live in Inwood and my little tiny place is in Washington Heights. It's like a 20 minute walk through the park. Really nice. This studio is uh, it's in the top floor of this beautiful church and we have a group of 13, 14 artists that share the floor. So I have this little tiny space. It's just like a mini window in the back and like a little space here where I uh, paint and a big closet, which is like my office. So you can see a little piece of the walls. This is was um, an open studio set up with the work in progress. Uh, little small pieces, more details. So with this, you gotta fill in a little bit of the mix of my paintings. So these are all just like work in progress. I work a lot with um, liquid. I, I, I really like the inks and watercolor and kind of uh, fluid acrylics and all uh, all the liquid in my painting is very present too. Uh, for some reason, I like that the, they have like a light, a light on their own. And so it's a little bit of control, but a little bit of accident. And I really like that. Um, that's a very important part of the combination of the paintings at the end. Now, this is my apartment. <laughs> this is my living room slash room slash dinner area, homework. <laughs> Everything happens in this uh, corner. So in the quarantine, I just removed that bed and kind of opened up this corner to, to work over there a little more. This was just taken in the past, probably in a weekend that I work on these two pieces in the floor. I really like to work in the floor probably for the liquid part is easier. And then um, when I have just loose canvases, I just throw them in the floor and, and work over there. So now this is more recent. Um, I got this big roll of canvas and it ended up being very, very thin to work uh, without a stretcher. It didn't really work out. So I got these stretchers and um, I kind of like them to, to use uh, for this section. So I have the painting in the back and uh, 
three more like in the same size. They are kind of big, like 60 by 50 or something. So I've been working simultaneously like in three of them, but not so, uh, this is my cat that for some reason adores to step on my paintings. <laughs> so that was a little bit um, my studio. So, so then you get a feeling of all this crazy moment. Um, now I wanna show you like three projects that I have in progress. Um, so this was a series of uh, lino cuts that I did a couple of months ago and, and I really loved them. They were all based on the heart. Um, pretty much out of a, of a memory, you know, of, a, of experience that always fascinates me that the heart in an embryo is just, um, total, I mean, that totally exists without a brain, you know, like it was a very personal thing, like, you know, in my first sonogram with the baby, uh, you know, you can hear this heart like so loud when the embryo is like two weeks and there's no brain. <laughs> so that, uh, that thing always kind of like stay with me and some, for some reason kind of came out like a few months ago with this project. So I did all this, uh, I did four little cuts and kind of print them together. Um, you know, I've been just trying things. There, this is just a piece of paper. So I'm doing like a, a little patchwork quilting type of piece. More also like to have a, like a blanket or, you know, like a blanket or some kind of things that you cover yourself with based in that story so so i don't know i really like i really like the also the the lino cut itself uh the material like this it, it's so funny but i feel like uh it turned out like the you know the, the linoleum is gray and then when you ink it with when you put the ink with red it turns out like this weird color like a liver or like an organ <laughs> like something like from the body so i really like that too i don't know so all of this is so those it, aren't prints those are the lino the actual the lino cuts. Lino, yeah those are the lino cuts that um that i'm really in love with i don't know what i'm gonna do with that but uh there's four so far oh sorry there is four so far um so maybe i just expanded or something so this is totally like on the side and it's there. So I probably need to go back to that um, project. So this is one thing, what is this not working? Uh, I did this other um, transparency studies, which I like it a lot. These were like just some watercolor drawings in the back. And then I blew up these, balloon, these balloons that you blow up with a little straw. Um, and then I was like amazed with the, fo the photos really, I, I really love the photos that you create all this effect uh, and transparencies and color and uh, I just love it. When you um, kind of smash the balloon, um, it's, it's really nice too. So I really want to do something with this as well. Uh, it's like a, another mini thing. Let me just show you the images alone. So these are just tiny little experiments. Um, I probably, this was my first trial. I probably have to refine a little bit the photographs or I don't know. Uh, so this is another thing. <laughs> and one more thing I'm working on is um, the embro these embroideries. Um, you know, these are tiny little embroideries that I just start to do very like randomly out of nowhere. Pretty much bay, like kind of thinking on the whole more than the surrounding, like the whole and the emptiness in a way like that. Uh, or oh, I hear something, is that okay? Um, is everybody hearing okay? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's somebody, uh, Linda Smith is joining. Oh, hi, Linda. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna mute you, Linda. Okay. So out of these embroideries, uh, kind of came out, so I, um, let me just recap. I was just doing this out of nowhere. I just started doing these mini little embroideries and uh, it's funny the way they turn. Um, the whole project became it kind of became this public installation that I did last summer. Um, so I'm just connecting the two. Oh, hold on. Is that your phone? Yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it just disappeared. <laughs> um, so this was a project that I did last summer, um, just doing weaving in this. Uh, fans in uh, Jersey City. Uh, it was so amazing the way it happens, uh, but somebody saw my paintings in a show and kind of uh, suggested me to, to apply for this commission and I have no idea, I never done public art in the past. So I was kind of like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I could translate my paintings into something public. Um, but then I kind of used the, the little embroidery idea of that emptiness and it worked out really well. And the project was just um, very, very, very nice for me, like really enjoyable and significant. And every little knot become like um, a whole new story. So this was kind of another wing that <laughs> kind of grew up. <laughs> out of that, um, so that's, yeah, so that, that's another little thing. Um, so right now I'm doing more embroidery. I have a few minutes, let me just uh, stop sharing these. Ah, no, before that, I'm just gonna go quick, quickly to my painting page. You know, we started a little bit later, so you don't have to rush too much. Okay, um, for the people who have haven't really seen these. Um, I don't even know if this is the best way to, to show them in my website. I'm gonna start with the bottom. I, I did this long time ago, this kind of manuscript uh, formats. They are pretty big. All of them are like six, eight feet long. And um, so I like the scrolling idea, like that textile feeling, like to, to create a roll or something like continuous. Um, so I found this, you know, this way to, to put them together kind of is attractive to me, but I don't know, you cannot really, I mean, you cannot really, you cannot really go individually to each painting. But anyway, you have a feeling of, of whatever it is there. So I'm gonna stop um, sharing my website. Um, and I'm gonna just uh, go around my, my space over here quickly. So I'm gonna just share this with uh, for one minute. You're, you're sharing the screen again? I'm sharing the screen with an iPad so I can just go around. Oh, right, right, right. Now this part might not record. It's so, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's, it's just briefly, I guess. Okay. Um, so I just want to show you a little bit. So this is the corner that I've been working lately. And um, I'm gonna go to this. This is probably, this is the very first um, sketch. Oh my God, somebody's ringing my bell in this moment. Can you hold for a minute? <laughs> of course, of course that has to happen. Hello. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. So this is like the very beginning of my new canvas. It probably will be so different. Uh, I know they change a lot after a while. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. And then this is the other one, a little more, uh, like a little 
some this was a little before so this all been like in the last three months like these two and uh, that's it and i want to show you so this is my my last piece that one is done and then i've been working in this embroidery this is totally so this has been a lot of my time in quarantine like this piece. I don't know, I switch out a piece of canvas in the uh, cloth rack that I have in the closet to be able to kind of do the stitching, you know, back and front. Uh, Can you show the other side? The other side? Yeah, it's there too. Oh, okay. So, so it's pretty simple. And that's the really thin canvas. Yes, which is prime in the other side, and then here is just natural and bleach. So I really like this side. I don't know what's going to happen with this. Uh, I was thinking to mix with paint, but I haven't touched that part yet. So this is like another little shady body. And um, that's it. Um, oh, I have, I'm going to show you these. These are little white colors. Um, Are those the ones you're planning on bringing for the show at the art center? No, no. These these are in paper. I I don't know. They could be. <laughs> uh, I have some uh, six by six pieces that I want um, that I, I can show you. Also, those are in uh, in wood. Okay. These are just working paper. Uh, I usually like to have like little pieces of paper or canvas um, simultaneously with my big pieces. It's kind of uh, useful like this little thing. Sorry for the moment. Like these guys. So I usually have like different size so I can reuse uh, leftover paint or something. So I, I do this. I have them on the side and kind of start doing a mini collection simultaneously. So after a while, you get a little story going on there. Um, so that's pretty much my studio right now. Um, let me just stop. So that's a little overview of my stuff. So anyone who uh, wants to ask any questions, you can unmute yourself. Oh, beautiful <laughs> Thank work. you, Marta. Does anyone have any particular questions? Marta. Hola. Are you planning to sell any of your art? Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, Yes, of course. It's never easy to let them, you know, to let them go. But of course, um, yes, yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Marta, you had a show like in, in before we went into quarantine, right? We, you had a show in New Jersey? I got my first solo show ever. I haven't been, you know, so funny, but I've been working for years without really showing much. Uh, pretty much focus on the kids and the painting, but like kind of confined. Uh, so I start showing more like probably the last year. And it's been really nice, like one thing thrown to another one and another one. And um, so that, that show in Jersey City was really nice. I showed the little, um, the little wooden pieces that Michelle was asking me about, the six by six. I have a little video if you have, well, it's kind of like, um, but yeah, that was that was a great experience. I, I'm hoping for more. It's always so nice to show, and then always things happen after. So I'm really hoping for keep myself a little more active. <laughs> so Marta, love it. Wow, it's Linda. Um, so missed you. Uh, My question was, I'm so sorry, I miss, <laughs> I miss you, sister. I missed the first um, five minutes, but I wondered, um, are you putting the thread as you did in your installation in the Jersey City? Are you weaving that now into the canvases? Is that what you're doing? 
Oh, no, no, no. That, uh, no, I just started out this. Um, I kind of like this rod that you can move it around all the time. Um, so I have, I started out this piece in the quarantine. Uh, no, nothing to do with that. I just, this is just like little thread. The one in the in Jersey City was really thick, a paracord. So it has to be durable, uh, weather safe and all that. Uh, no, so this is just a, a painting, um, a painting idea that I started with thread. I think I'm gonna add some ink to it, but I haven't done it yet. Um, no, it's totally different, it's totally different material, but I really like the embroidery. It's, 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 so, it's so different, it's so slow, it's very personal, it's very intimate, and um, it's a totally different, I don't know, like feeling. You know, with the painting, you kind of like throw them there and everything, with this, you cannot really do that. So probably that's why it's been very attractive to me, this, this really meditative, slow kind of pace. Uh, so let's see what happened. Um, so let's see what happened with this. Um, yeah. yeah. So okay. I have like many different little things in the air, here and there, but I think that's, that's great to have, you know, different channels. So let's see what happens. The work is beautiful, Marta. I love it. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much. I love the negative space, you know, when you're doing the, uh, when you were showing the fence uh, project, the negative space and then the, uh, you know, the, the, the work of the, the feeling of negative and positive, it works so beautifully. I Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm really glad you noticed that. That was yeah. a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Like that, that importance of the emptiness. Um, I really like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll move on to Miss Tammy. Thank you, I'm gonna, uh, Thank you, Marta. We'll still be at the end. I'm going to pin your Hi, video. Marta. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Tammy. Okay, so here we have Tammy Whoopsie in her wonderful studio here down in the South Bronx. Are you're, uh, I have to unmute you. Okay, now you're on, Tammy. Hi. Yeah, your work looks great, Marta. It's really beautiful. It's so nice to see. Um, okay, so I'm Tammy, and I'm in the South Bronx, um, and I'm mostly primarily a printmaking artist, um, and that can be in different mediums, but that also includes um, making artist books. So I thought I'd start with the artist books and then work on to showing you some of my presses and then show you some of my prints. Okay, so can everyone see this? I'm not sure. Can you see this? Yeah, that looks good. That looks good? Okay, yeah. so basically I'll tell you what I did later, but I glued down all the linoleum left over from my print onto the cover of this book. Okay, so. So does anybody know what an artist book is by chance? Or has anybody seen artist books by chance? Oh, I guess nobody can talk. Okay, well, um, artist books can be defined in a lot of different ways, um, but this would be one example of an artist book. So, let's see. So this is the book I finished. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this, everyone? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, okay, so. This, what year is from? Um, so I finished this book. Um, it's commemorating the year of soils for the United Nations. So let me just show you the beginning. So basically I did all of this. I really like to focus on embossment. So it's kind of hard to see on the screen. If you saw it in real life, you get a feel for the embossment. Um, and then, can you see this? So it's like a mirror image. And I'm primarily working in black and white for this print. Are the pages actually bound or are they? Bound. No, I didn't find this book at all. I really didn't want to, I have a, I'm not that crazy about putting holes in paper. 
Uh -huh. so for the most part, when I when I make a book, I usually do the box, or I'll do an accordion binding. I can show you that too. But um, for the most part, I really don't like to to bind paper. <laughs> so anyway, oh okay. So let me see if we can see this. So this opens up. It very well. Okay. So, Dami, these are all print making or how? All print making, yeah. This is all using linoleum, tight set, um, shinko A. But this is all, and I'll show you how I did this, but this is wood tight. Ah, I see. Oil. Okay. And then put this around. Oh, wait. Just open. And it's just one copy. You don't have. Do you have multiple? I have edition seven. Uh, one print, one copy of this book is in um, the museum in, uh, it's not Nova Scotia, someplace else there. But anyway, they acquired one of the books. Um, B at silence. And then Robin listening underground. And then Earthbound Worm Create. And then this pulls out. Dark Knight pulled out to white light. And that opens. I don't know if you can see that. And then Bird Feathers, Light and Light. And it's just a little panel. A rain cloud floats, the ascent further up. And now we listen. And then quiet. And then up, 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 up. Oh, wow. wow. That's so beautiful. <laughs> so wonderful. Zigzag, zigzag. reach, rain drops down, dirt, now we must toil. We hear our rain, dirt becomes soil. And then the last page is just embossed. And then here's the Paulo font. So usually with artist books, um, if you notice, there's no title page. So before books became um, codified, I want to use the word, um, you would put a colophon in the back instead and just explain the whole book. So that's usually what a lot of book artists do. I like to do that because you're not dealing with title pages and green and stuff. Um, so Soil and Water was born the week leading up to Superstorm Sandy. Even then, I could look from the top of the Triborough Bridge and see the soil on the waterfront being sealed with concrete. Three years later, nothing has improved in my Bronx neighborhood. This soil is being claimed and covered over by corporations building on city-owned coastal plains. Instead, this marshland is essential for a flood protection zone. This begins our story. We need to preserve our soils and water for life. 
This arts book is dedicated to the United Nations International Year of Soils 2015. Then, you know, when you stand in front and leave a shadow, you can see the embossing. Can you? You can just barely see it. Yeah. Beautiful. And then I have a little bibliography in the back. So um, different uh, books that inspired me. So uh, International Year of Soil, and then Th Thomas Egan, The Worst of Hard Times, and Willa Cather, My Antonio Um And then John Steinbeck, The Great Mr. Brack. So, so that's one artist book that I made. It took me five years to work on this. Five years. I was <laughs> on this for five years. <laughs> I was wondering like, how long you take me? This is so much. Yeah. Really nice. Thanks. Is that just, and you're using book cloth, not leather. I'm using book cloth, yeah, not leather. Okay. Um, and then it, you can see the linoleum that I use. So. so that's one book. And then here, I'll show you this one really quick. So this one's called Sleeping Bear. And this one I did using a reductive um, wood cut. And basically how that works is you cut out a, a, a color from the wood and then you just keep printing. So you can't go back. You can only go forward with reductive wood cut. So wait, let me just throw this um, okay. So sleeping there. And then I don't know if this is gonna show up very well because there's so much ink on this. Kind of hard to see. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, nothing was immune to ravaging when that blew outside the burrow. The bear slept, but what replaced its dream was a bit of rustling from the outside. Yeah. It grew slowly first. More was multiplied on a small lawn. Then more was piled on greater harm, unbeknownst to the hibernating bear. The familiar sights of the four-legged creature was changing under its heavy-lidded eyes. Past the bear scratched trees, the bear of a foreign sound was drowned out by the talking stream. He sought to learn why the present was consumed for the future. Slowly walked away. Yeah, that's one book. And then I'll show you one more, and then I'll show you my prints. Okay, so this book, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Mm, yes. So this one's called The Pest. And I actually made this one a really long time ago, but um, I still want to do something with it because I never really felt like I had a chance to really show it. So, so it comes in this little ledge thing here. Ooh. Oh. And this is 280 pages of accordion bound book. So <laughs> I really know how to do accordion really well. Oh yeah. <laughs> So basically the idea is, it's the life and death of a housefly. Let me see if I can pop this up. So basically it's like a, a movie film strip. They can just keep turning it. Oh, wow. So the idea is movement and line. And also the idea that it's Something that keeps turning around and coming back to where we started. So 
are these all made with uh, lino pots too? Oh, linoleum. A oh, sleeping bear was made with wood. Uh, but I, I really love linoleum because you can cut it up and you can recycle it, you can reuse it. It's like a very malleable substance. Right. So, I mean, just looking at the lino pet that you did of that heart, you know, you get a feel for like, the actual linoleum is so beautiful. You know, you don't want to get rid of that either. How long did it take to make this book? Well, this was a seven year project. Um, I editioned 10, I bound two, and one of them is at Yale, and the other one is at uh, the Museum School in Boston. It's so, fabulous. So I yeah, so libraries, for the most part, libraries have arts book collections, so it's usually used as like a teaching tool for art students that are either in the book arts program at a university or they're studying printmaking or they can use it as a book structure thing. So libraries do have budgets for acquiring this kind of thing. So, I mean, I don't know what it's like now. I haven't had much luck, but, oh, sorry. So this is the last page. That's really nice. The pest. The pest. Mm. The pest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So those are my artist books. And let me show you some other. I'll just show you my studio. Let's see. Can you see this? Yeah. So, so this is my Charles Brand etching press over here. Um, and these are really nice presses. You see that blue right there? That's a dead giveaway that it's a brand press. So these are really great presses just for um, doing lots of work. <laughs> and right now I'm working on this book. I don't know if you can see this. I'm using carborundum print. Um, it's basically just carborundum and glue. Because right now I can't get into a print shop to do any kind of nitric acid printing. So I'm kind of just doing this carborundum technique. I'm kind of playing around with it. Sorry, how, how do you call it? Like, what is it? Oh, carborundum. And um, I don't know if you've heard of this artist, Doc Brash. He's, he's from Pennsylvania. But he's the one that developed it. And I've just been playing around with it. Um, it's a really interesting technique. It's basically just carborundum and glue. What is carborundum? Carborundum is used a lot in lithography. But here, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is carborundum. And oh, but it's used for lithography. It's so used for lithography a lot, but there's so many uses for it. I don't know if you can see this, but that's what it is. is so it, it's this powder? It's like powder. Yeah, you know what it's kind of like sandpaper, except without the paper. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So let me see if I can show you the, oh, wait. Let's see if I can back down. Okay, so here, I just thought I'd bring out some of my prints to show you over here. I can. Beautiful. Okay, so these are some older prints, but I was working a lot with like linear printmaking um, and I'll show you the press that I used to work with. But this is one of a series of tree prints. So see if you can see that. Okay. And basically what I put is Okay, your internet got Cut off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, but your image is is lagged behind. It's frozen. There you go. Slowly, sort of. And. and Oh, wait. I think we, did we lose you? Yeah, wait, are you there now? Yes. Yeah, okay. 
So this is another print that I did. I don't, can you see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is also a series of prints that I'm working on based on George Orwell. Um, and this one is called Keep the Aspidistrus Flying Rainbow, um, Keep the Aspidistrus Flying Double Helix. Okay. So basically, um, I don't know if you've ever read George Orwell, but he has a book which talks about the middle class, the eroding middle class. And um, the middle class usually has an aspidistus plant that they put either in their window or on their table, coffee table, whatever, whatnot. So I kind of based this print on that book. So, um, and then what I do usually is I'll print half and then I'll print the other half. So by doing that, I can get like a full print because this is about as big as I can get. So, okay. Really big for a print. Yeah, so let me take you over here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. So this is going to... Mm, you froze again. Tammy, you froze. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a print right now that's at Postos. Um, and this just gives you an idea of the linoleum. So can you see the linoleum right here? So that's what I'm working off of. And then I'm printing off of it. And then just to give you an idea of what the linoleum looks like, here's the linoleum. So this is just floor linoleum that I'm using. Okay. It's just plain old floor linoleum. And it's what's called battleship linoleum because basically it only includes two ingredients, which is uh, flax oil and sawdust. And that's it. Like those are the two ingredients that make up this kind of linoleum. Oh. So it's really, um, it's kind of making a comeback because people want to have like all natural products in their homes. So. And you buy it by rolls? They're like. Yeah, I buy it by the rolls. Yeah. That's so nice. What's the foundation? I mean, once you peel away what you want, what's the foundation? Yeah. Left. That's a, you know, that's a really good question as to why I started doing embossing in the first place. Because what would happen is that I would do these prints, right? And I noticed if I cut out too much linoleum, then I get this horrible buckling of the paper. So I couldn't leave too many gaps in the linoleum. Um, so then I just started like just taking the ink out by hand. And that's how I decided to do this embossment. So like if you see here, right, this, I'm going to take all that stuff out when I actually print it. I'm not going to have it all there because it's just too much busyness. So um, like if you look over here at this print, right, so I'll take all this out before I print it. Okay. Um, okay. So so here's my other press. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here's the other press. I don't know if you can see it. So this is my large oversized press. And that's what I've been using for the most part for my larger prints. Um, and what I'll do usually, so like here's a print that I did. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, I will print this in half and then the other half and then combine it together. So, okay, so, and then let me show you this. Sorry. So this print right here, this, I, I inked up 2,000 uh, leaves to create this print. And then I basically did a stencil on top of it. So, and then this is at the Atlanta Public Library. Um, this was the rough draft. They weren't crazy about the colors. So then I did another draft. They still weren't crazy about it. So then I did a third. So these are the two working proofs. 
Um, yeah, and I found actually with inking all these leaves, um, it's, it's such a great medium to teach. What kind of tree were they from? Oh, that's a good question. So I went to Atlanta and I picked only indigenous leaves from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, and then I brought them back to my studio. I flattened them all out. Um, and then I inked them all up. <laughs> so. And what were one of the trees that you, you Uh, so one of their trees is the, oh, I want to say. Is there a tupelo? 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 Yeah, I think that's the one, right? It's like a really wide, flat yeah. leaf. Yeah. I'm wondering yeah. tupelo. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and then, okay, so then this is my, this is my Vandercook press right here. So. Wait, you have three? Yeah, I have three presses and I use all of them. Yeah, <laughs> girl. Yeah. Here, uh, here's, the, here's the Vandy press, Vandercook. Uh-huh. And Vandercook presses were used for offset. I don't know if anybody knows anything about um, types. It's called a typesetting press. So basically a typesetting press, you are setting the type and then you can print whatever you want. <laughs> like sky's the limit, okay? So this is pre-internet when everything was mo monologue and everything was made here in the US. So, all of this equipment I'm showing you, this was before everything started being made in China. So, and then this is my hot plate. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Okay. Yeah, you're too so low. There you go. Okay, so this is my hot plate. Um, so basically for the linoleum, it's too hard to cut out um, if you just do it dry. So a lot of times, well, actually most of the time, I'll put it on this hot plate. It'll warm up just enough so that it's easier to cut out. Oh. I so, didn't... yeah. So like with your heart print that you're doing, mm -hmm. if, if you don't have like a hot plate, you could actually, um, like for the, for brack, we got these little griddle. It's like a little griddle hot plate thing. Oh. And you could put it on that, warm it up. And then when it gets too hot, take it off. But it's one way to cut out linoleum and it makes it so much nicer. Oh, I had no idea. That's so yeah. nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's a, there's a little griddle hot plate thing. When you get back, I'll show you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and then this is where I keep all my type. So this is all um, type. This is the, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Yeah. So this is the wood type that I used for the soil and water book, basically. So. And then all type is set backwards. So you have to set everything backwards and then it prints forwards. Um, so you just get into that like mind pattern of like everything you print is gonna be backwards. <laughs> like yeah. you just start thinking like that. Um, and then before you know it, you can't think forwards. How many different fonts do you have? So let's see here. So I have, I don't have a ton of type, I have enough type because you can go nuts with this stuff. Oh yeah. So I have, um, this is the largest type I have. And then this is, I have some lead type, but I'm not going crazy with the lead type because, you know, I don't want to like be eating it and <laughs> probably not great health wise. So, and it weighs a ton. Yeah. Uh, and then what happens with typesetting, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, so this is pre-internet. You would have what's called the California job case layout, and this is how people would set type. So you'd have this like little guide for how you'd set the type, and then you'd know which box had which letter, and you'd just pull it. And um, back in the day when newspaper people would be setting type, they would just know. Like they would just have their type, they would pull it. And I mean, have you ever seen this? Like in decoration, people will put like little decoration doodads in it. You've probably seen it. Mm -hmm. But um, but this is what this is. So like, this is like one box just full of H's. And then like, this is one box just full of M's. So basically it's all organized by this. You've got the large, the small, the periods, the commas, everything, okay? 
and then and then you can set and then I'm setting it over here so that's set and then this is the lockup that you used for printing and then I hope you can see this So it's very satisfying. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Oh, one more thing I just wanted to show you. So I don't know if you can see this. So this is my drying rack. And these are some of my smaller prints. Um, these are some demos that I did for the the print that I did for the leaf print for Atlanta. So um, and this is what I'm working. This is kind of uh, the precursor to what I'm working on right now for this artist book that I'm working on. So this is like etching and watercolor. And similar techniques. Um, this is what's called shinkole, and I think I taught this at BRAC, but basically what this is is it's little sheets of paper you glue upside down and then you print on the plate. So, and this is a good example of, so this is the yellow, right? So I printed this yellow. And then this is the second color printed on top. So, and then with this print, basically what I did is I started out with this type. So like, I love this type. So the, just the idea of one baby snowflake named spring. So I did, I set the type and then I put the snowflake and then I decided I liked it. So, I liked it so much. I wanted to do a print based on that title. So, and then I've really been playing with the paper a lot, like thin, thick paper. So like I'm gluing down paper, but I'm not keeping it attached. So like I'm having paper come off the sides of the page and I've really started to like not using paper that's flat, you know, just giving it some dimension with uh, having it wrinkled. So, oh, and then, Sorry, one last thing. Oh, this is more examples of the shinkle egg. So I don't know if you can see this, but that's the glued down pieces of paper. So, um, oops. So I actually, um, I set this on my, my type set, my Vandercook. And this was 2019, I made this card. I do an annual New Year's card thing. Um, because, you know, I, I was teaching this mail art class, but I've been doing mail art for a very long time. And I've always loved sending things in the mail. So every year I do like a holiday card and I did Foresight Hindsight is the site. This was before the pandemic happened. Um, and oops, I made this, so I made this card. based on kind of what I'm doing right now, playing around with the folding, paper folding. So, I'll show you. so this, this is what's called, oops, this is what's called a Turkish map fold. So it's a map fold because it's based on the idea that you're folding it up into this little thing here, so. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, hindsight, foresight is the site. So, and it's like, it, it's an eye chart. So basically it's like uh, how you see an eye chart with the word hindsight on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I got that one. <laughs> yeah, you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it.
Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Tammy. You're so welcome. does anybody have any questions for Miss Tammy here? Tammy, I want to see them. Uh, do you have a website? Like, uh, you know, with the movement, it's hard to focus, like, and you yeah, are. No, I do on my website. Yeah, I have all of this documented on my website. So it's, it's Platsing Press. Yeah, it's Platsing Press at um, platsingpress.com. How? So it's P L O T Z I N G. Do you know what you can type, type it into I'll the type it in. uh, chat? I'm gonna look for you. Yeah, like it's uh, so many things to see. I would love to see them flat. Like yeah, yeah, it's hard to show on Zoom, but I know. But it's it's fabulous. It's so great, Tammy. Thank you. Thanks. That was really inspiring. Thanks. <laughs> it's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Aurelio. Yeah, I I love printmaking. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, you can say it. <laughs> Is it like me where you just love the process? Yeah, I love the process. I don't even care if it comes out. Like, I just love getting in that zone where you're just printing, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I love the fact that it's not like, you're not thinking about the final product. You're just kind of working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like layering things, you know? Like everything's about the layering and the fact that you can always reuse things, you know? Which is actually kind of bad because then you never throw anything out, but. Yeah. <laughs> You have a sustainable practice then yeah i mean like with the linoleum i would do you know the, the reason why i did soil and water that was because i did like the large print and then i cut it up for the book so i took i just took all the linoleum cut it up taped it back down and then ran it through the the grand the smaller press so mm -hmm. okay that's so great, and your, your, your space looks so amazing. I'm so jealous of all this area and all these beautiful windows. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's just so, so Where awesome. is your studio, Tammy? It's in the South Bronx. In the Bronx. So it's in the Mott Haven section. It's a great space, great space. Yeah, and you know what? The building is great. Like all my neighbors, they're so supportive. And it's just, it's a terrific community. I really couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, if, if anybody knows, Bronx Art Space is in the first floor, and that's a, um, a local ga uh, non-for-profit gallery also here in the Bronx. Oh. Yeah. Everyone here has just been so supportive, and just re it really feels like a community. So. Have you been there for many years? I've been here like six years. It feels like longer, <laughs> actually. But yeah, you work a lot. You you work seems like for like <laughs> twenty years. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, some of it is. So. <laughs> yeah. So I used to work at the printmaking workshop at Bob Blackburn's before I got a uh, workshop. So I worked there for like years and years as a monitor. Oh. So that was really my introduction is uh, going into the print shop. And I don't know if anybody's heard about Blackburn, but he ran a print shop on the lower, well, it was actually like Chelsea area. And you would just meet all of these people from all over the world, just coming in and using the shop. And it was just a really nice community. So. Very nice. Yeah. So, and I just, and I also love printmaking. I love teaching printmaking. Like, I didn't think that was something that I would actually be very good at. But I think I figured out that if you love something enough, not that hard to teach it, you know? Well, you know, there is a fine line, but, um, yeah, you know, not is. all good artists are good teachers, you know, and vice versa. But you know what I think? I think students at BRAC are just really phenomenal. Like, I just, I don't know what it is about the students that go there. They're just, they're so kind and they're just really interested and they're just, really just so much fun to work with. No, your classes have been just wonderful. We just need to get more people to understand what printmaking is. Right. And I feel like printmaking, a lot of it is just like a learning curve. Like you have to teach people what it is because I think people just have this idea that it's just reproduction. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily know it as a process. Right. Well, or as a medium, like, okay, people <laughs> understand sculpture. People understand drawing, painting. But I don't think if you say printmaking, there's just like this blank face that comes across people's face. Like they don't actually always know what it is, per yeah. se. So. Mm. Okay. 
All right, so I um, want to thank everybody for attending. Um, just to remind you, uh, we're taking a day off tomorrow. We're hoping to be having a, a live program at Bronx River Art Center tomorrow from one to three if it's not raining. And that's going to be a healing drum circle. Oh, wow. So, and we'll also have some mask making and we're also painting flags. So it's a cultural immigrant initiative program. So if it's, uh, hopefully we'll be able to run it. We're still waiting to see what the weather is going to be like. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll have Hector Knaj, who's our digital animation teacher, and Josea Johnson, who was one of our photography teachers. We'll be doing studio visits on Sunday. Okay, and I'll be sending all that information out. Okay. So thank you, uh, some of our uh, new time people who came through Tammy and also through Marta. Thank you for attending. Thank you, thank you, thank you Michelle. Thank you. And I, can I just find out the name thank of the you. person who had the iPhone? Oh, is that me? Uh, I'm no, Eric. Eric. No, Eric, I've got you. There's someone down here who's just listed with iPhone. Hmm, maybe that person's name, iPhone. <laughs> no, 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 you're who? Hello, it's my No, Kimberly, I have. Oh, well. Okay. All right, everybody. So take care. Have a good weekend. And maybe we'll see you on Sunday bye. or at BRAC on Saturday. Bye. Okay, bye now. Bye bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thanks for joining, Dan. Okay, bye everybody.